Hello there, everybody! Bonna here, and in this video I'm gonna show you 25 tips and tricks to keep in mind while playing Ark Survival Evolved. Some of these tips revolve around general gameplay, while others are much more specific. These tips are steered towards new or returning players that may have forgotten or were never introduced to some of the newer mechanics that have been added over the years. If you're interested in a more in-depth guide to some of the game's mechanics, I would highly recommend checking out my absolute beginner's guide to Ark Survival Evolved before watching this video. <coughs> Shameless plug! <coughs> if you find this video helpful or enjoyable, please be sure to leave it a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Now let's get started! Whee! Tip number one, your character's build matters. I know that when I first started playing the game, I made my character absolutely jacked because it looked awesome and it was the closest that any video game character has ever come to representing me in real life. But I quickly found out that this can have a massive disadvantage in PvP situations because your character's hitbox is much larger and makes you a much easier target to hit. Making your character as small as possible and even changing their gender to female will give you the greatest advantage in PvP situations, although this playstyle isn't for everybody. Personally, I make my character a reasonable size with normal features and call it quits there. He still got a club for a dick though! Tip number two, change your in-game settings. Keeping things default is typically a bad choice, as you're missing out on a lot of additional functionality or using settings that actually hinder you. In terms of graphical settings, I would choose the settings that are appropriate for your personal system and what it can handle. Personally, I run the game on maximum settings unless I'm recording, at which point I turn down my anti-aliasing and shadows because these can be giant FPS tanks. As for optional features, I would disable bloom and light rays, as these can be really obnoxious when literally everything in the world of Ark wants to burn out your f***ing retinas. There's also a camera shake FX setting that can be extremely annoying when playing the game, as anytime you get near a large creature, your screen shakes worse than Michael J. Fox with a jackhammer. Outside of this, I would customize your key bindings to your liking. About the only thing that I change here is swapping the console command to tilde and my inventory key binding to tab, but these are personal choices that are completely up to you. Tip number three, character attributes can have multiple effects. Did you know that if you invest points into oxygen, it will not only increase the length of time your character can survive underwater, but will also increase their movement speed while swimming? Did you know that melee damage not only affects the damage you deal with melee weapons, but also increases your resource yield while gathering with manual tools such as pickaxe, hatchets, and chainsaws? Did you know that fortitude not only provides you with increased insulation versus the environment, but also increases your resistance to torpidity gaining effects? Did you know that investing points into food and water is absolutely f***ing worthless? What I'm getting at here is that it pays to do a little bit of research before investing your points, because some categories can have multiple effects, and others are pretty pointless for your build that you're going for. Personally, I like to spread out my attribute points for an all-around solid build. I typically go for around 300 health, 150 stamina, 350 weight, 2 fortitude, 130% movement speed, and the rest dumped into melee damage. As a fun fact, the reason I put one attribute point into fortitude is so the True Dawns can no longer one-shot knock you out if you happen to be bitten. Tip number four, gather explorer notes. You might think that those pointless dossiers and explorer notes lying around in the game serve no purpose other than providing backstory and untimely deaths, but in fact they're extremely useful in the early game. These collectibles provide nice chunks of experience for your character, but most importantly provide a 2x experience boosting effect that lasts for 10 minutes. Some of the rarer ones provide a 4x experience boosting effect, and can stack with the other boosters. If you can plan and coordinate well enough, you can time these boosting effects to level up extremely quickly. In fact, it's possible to get from level 1 all the way up to level 70 in about 7 minutes time on the island. Now I'm not going to provide specifics in this video about how to do that, because there are plenty of other sources available online showcasing the island note run. Tip number 5, build a starter base. You might think it's pointless to build the lesser tier bases early on because they don't provide much protection, but in my opinion, any protection is better than nothing. That's what she said. <laughs> it's important to have a place to respawn, store some heavier resources, and to simply take shelter during the night. Plus, the experience you gain from crafting structures is quite nice in the early game and can help progress you along nicely. Tip number six, your UI has functionality. Did you know that you can transfer items back and forth between your inventory and a structure or dino's inventory by simply hovering over the item and pressing the T key, or using the transfer all button at the top of your inventory? Did you know that you can easily drop items by hovering over them and pressing O, or drop all of your items using the drop all button at the top of your inventory screen? Did you know that you can quickly swap your gear by hovering over the item and pressing E? If not, then I would suggest taking some time to explore what the UI is capable of. All of these features not only make your gameplay experience a lot more enjoyable, but the quick responsiveness might just save your life in a tight situation. Tip number seven, water is extremely important. When exploring the arcs, it's always a good idea to keep water on you, whether it's inside a water skin, water jar, canteen, tech canteen, or custom food item. Water is essential to survival, and if it fully runs out, 
You're gonna have a bad time. Keep water in mind when building a base as well, as if you're too far from a water source, you may need to build some water tanks to gather rainwater for survival. Consuming berries or aquatic mushrooms can increase your water level as well, however to much lesser extents than actually drinking from a water source. Just be careful not to eat narco berries, stim berries, or some of the other mushrooms in the game, as they can have some less than desirable effects. Tip number 8. Always keep bolos on you. I cannot stress how important bolos are in the game. They're fairly cheap to make and extremely lightweight, so in my opinion there is no reason to not have these on your hotbar at all times. They're great for mobilizing players in PvP situations, and can be literal lifesavers in PvE. They're also great for mobilizing creatures for taming purposes. Tip number 9. Always keep parachutes or a glider skin on you. As I said with the bolos, it's always a good idea to keep some parachutes or a glider skin in your character. You never know what arc is going to throw your way, or in many cases, when it's going to throw you off of a f***ing cliff. The last thing that you need is to be digging around in the leech-infested swamp trying to find your body, all because you didn't have a parachute to pull that could have saved your life. Tip number 10. Armor plays a huge role in survival. I dove pretty deep into the different tiers of armor in my Absolute Beginner's Guide, but I think it's important to give you guys a brief summary in this video as well. Cloth is pretty weak, but it's decent against hotter temperatures. Hide is better armor, and has more insulation against cold temperatures, but it might be too hot to wear around the beaches. Gilly provides decent armor and insulation against the heat, and acts as camouflage by concealing you from nearby creatures. Flak has great armor value, but very poor insulation qualities. Fur gear has great insulation value in the cold, but it costs a lot to make, is extremely heavy, and is a really poor choice to wear in warmer areas. It's important to know what the different types of armor are and when you should be using them, as it could save your life in the game. Tip number 11, always use traps and immobilizations on creatures. In all of my time in playing Ark, I've learned to always use some kind of trap when taming creatures. Whether that be a bolo, chain bolos, bear traps, or structure traps, always do something to keep the creature from running all over the place. It takes a little more preparation time to do this, but it saves you so much time in the long run. Trust me, the last thing you want to do is chase down the creature you just put 96 trank arrows into, only to have two f***ing dilos show up to spit in your face like, Nah bro, should've used a trap, and why is this game so frustrating sometimes? Alrighty then. Tip number 12, sometimes the best trank weapon isn't the best. What I mean by that is, some creatures can have very low amounts of health, and you will sometimes risk accidentally killing the creature if you're using the best weapon you have available. For instance, when trying to tame an Achatina, I would recommend using a simple rifle with a trank dart as opposed to a higher quality crossbow and trank arrow. Even though the crossbow has a higher torpor output because of its weapon damage, you would risk killing the thing if you shot it. Tip number 13, taming a tracking system. Did you know that there is a taming tracking system in the game that allows you to actively monitor a creature's location, vitals, and taming progress from afar? To access it, simply open up your inventory and navigate towards the top of your screen to this icon. Any creature that you've began to tame will show up in the list. Simply click on the creature's portrait to display their information on your screen. Tip number 14, Narco Berries instead of Narcotics. Did you know that in many cases using Narco Berries is actually better than using Narcotics to keep a creature knocked out? One Narcotic will increase a creature's torpor by 40 over a period of 8 seconds. Conversely, using the equivalent 5 Narco Berries will increase a creature's torpor by 37.5 over the course of 15 seconds. While a creature's torpor is rising, it cannot decrease, so mathematically speaking, narco berries have a much longer lasting effect than narcotics do. Most players still choose to use narcotics though, because they weigh a lot less and don't have a spoil timer like narco berries do. Tip number 15, tame an herbivore early on for berries. Herbivores are extremely useful in all stages of the game, but especially in the early game. You're going to need access to a lot of narco berries to tame other creatures, and picking them by hand sucks literal donkey dick. Personally, I would try to find a decent level Parasaur to tame first, because they're super easy to knock out, don't take long to tame, and can provide you with a solid starter mount. After you've got your first herbivore to gather berries with, things become a lot easier and allow you to tame other creatures much more efficiently, including better herbivores. Tip number 16, tame a flying creature. Taming something like a Pteranodon is really easy and OH MY GOD! <laughs> Pteranodons are really easy to tame at lower levels and can be bolo'd and knocked out quickly with even the most basic of knockout methods. Having a flyer under your belt opens up a world of possibilities, not only making traveling around the arc easier, but also allowing you to easily scout for certain creatures. Tip number 17, get a carnivore type of creature. Raptors, Carnosauruses, Allosauruses, Rexes, Spinos, or any other type of carnivore is going to be a godsend for you early on. You're going to need lots of raw meat for feeding your other tames, funding your supply of spoiled meat for narcotics, and most importantly acquiring hide. Hide is used to craft a ton of things in the game, including crafting stations, weapons, armors, saddles, and even certain modes of transportation. Tip number 18, crops are important. 
Start growing your crops early on to avoid a bottleneck in the future. You're mainly going to need rock root, citronelle, long grass, and sava root, as these are used for crafting kibble and other special recipes in the game. Crops need to be planted within a crop plot and provided with water and fertilizer in order to grow. Placing them inside of a greenhouse will provide a greenhouse effect which further boosts their growth rate and crop production. Tip number 19, don't settle for cooked meat. Did you know that you can create custom food recipes inside of a cooking pot? Simply place all of the ingredients you want to use inside of a cooking pot along with a blank note and click on the Make Recipe button. From here you can customize the look and text of the custom food. For a complete list of food options and their special effects in a food recipe, check out the ARC Wiki page. This will allow you to experiment with the numbers without wasting in-game resources, and once you find a recipe that works for you, you can finalize it in-game. Additionally, increasing your character's crafting speed attribute directly affects how good the custom food recipe that you make will be. For example, check out the first recipe that we made using zero crafting skill and compare it to the recipe we made with max crafting skill. Because of this, it might be in your best interest to mind wipe your character before creating your food recipe and dumping all of your attribute points into crafting speed to acquire the best recipe you can get. Tip number 20, Cactus Broth and Bug Repellent are godsends. Did you know that consuming bug repellent reduces the aggro radius of nearby insects and bats? Did you know that Cactus Broth has the same effect, but for all creatures in the game? Did you know that these effects not only stack, but can be combined with ghillie armor to basically make you invisible to nearby creatures? Stacking all of these effects can be a massive game changer and help you reach certain areas in the game that you would otherwise not be able to get to. Tip number 21, manually collecting honey. Did you know that you can collect honey without any tools or tames? By using ghillie armor, you can safely approach a beehive and press E to take 5 honey from the hive, placing it on a 15 minute cooldown. You can technically do this without ghillie armor, but if you attempt to do it, you're gonna have a bad time! Tip number 22, finding different snap points. Did you know that you can use other structures to find alternative snap points while building? Take this foundation for instance. By itself, you only have one available snap point for a wall. But if you were to place another foundation next to it and either move your camera or press the Q key while placing the wall, it will cycle to an alternative snap point on the new foundation. This allows you to reposition walls, ceilings, and other structures to your liking. This functionality isn't just cosmetic though. In fact, you can use these additional snap points to your advantage to double layer walls, extend foundation support, and even sink foundations below the level of other foundations. As another example, say that you wanted to extend the floor of your raft, but you're unable to snap a foundation out any farther. If you try to just use ceilings in this scenario, you can only place two of them away from the nearest foundation before hitting the cap, and the game won't let you place walls this far out because it lacks foundation support. To combat this, you could snap a ceiling onto the foundation, then snap a new foundation underneath of this ceiling. Then remove the ceiling panel and your foundation will stay in place. USING MAGIC! The best part is, these are foundations being placed, which means that your walls and ceilings above will still receive support. These are just a few examples of how to cheese the building system in ARK, and I couldn't even begin to dive into the specifics in this video, but just know that if there's something you're trying to achieve in the game, more than likely there's a way to do it. The wiki page and YouTube videos just like this one are a great source for finding specific builds and tricks that you're looking for. Tip number 23, Alpha Creatures Have Loot. You might think that Alpha Creatures are only in the game to f*** you in the ass, but you're only partially right. Alpha Creatures can drop tools, weapons, and armor of varying qualities, making them a very valuable source of loot at any stage in the game. In addition to the lucrative loot table, they also provide a substantial boost in experience when you manage to kill one. Alpha Raptors are by far the easiest of the creatures to kill. You can use a tall rock or use the terrain to your advantage when killing one if you don't have a suitable tame. In this case, I used my own body to distract the Alpha Raptor while I killed it. Otherwise, I would stick with a high damage mount to take on Alpha killing. I've even used an Equus in combination with high melee damage to kill Alphas before, as the horse absorbs the damage while you deal the damage out. Tip number 24, Staying Hidden. If you're playing on a PvP server, I've found it far easier to survive by staying relatively low-key and hidden from plain sight. Building a very compact base in a small nook or cranny is your best chance of survival, especially if you're playing alone or with a small group of friends. Sometimes it's better to stay in a lesser tier of structure too, such as stone, as it's less obvious to enemy players that you have valuable resources inside your base. Please understand that the moment that you start placing turrets around your base, you've officially marked yourself as a target for raiders. The resources required to make turrets are quite extensive, and most players have an understanding that if you have the resources to make turrets, you more than likely have more inside your base that makes it worth raiding. I would suggest starting with Plant X Species Plants, as this will provide you with excellent defense without drawing too much attention. This will allow you to gather the resources necessary to upgrade your base to a higher tier and place multiple turrets down at once for a better chance of survival. As a quick side note, it's not always best practice to set your turrets to the maximum range possible. Sometimes this can draw unwanted attention from players that otherwise wouldn't have even seen your base location, but now know where you are because they took a bullet while passing by. Something else to keep in mind is that the more dedicated PvP players will oftentimes set their graphical settings to the lowest possible, because it gives them a massive advantage in PvP fights and while scouting. 
For instance, can you spot the hidden vault in this video on high settings? Now how about in low settings? Because of this massive advantage that players have using lower settings, I would suggest building your base with your graphics turned down to ensure you're hiding it properly, then adjust your graphics back up to your liking when you're finished. And finally, tip number 25, become an escape artist. Did you know that if you get picked up by an enemy player, you can use a crossbow and grappling hook to escape? If you don't have a crossbow or grappling hook on you, there is one other method to escape, although it's kind of a complete bitch button. The method that I'm speaking of is logging out of the game while you're being carried. This will force your character into an unconscious state in which they can't be picked up by enemy teams. Because your character is unconscious, you will also not suffer any fall damage from the height that you're dropped from. Just make sure that if you do this, you time it correctly so that your character doesn't fall into a dangerous area and you can quickly re-log and escape. Alright, well that about wraps up this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave this video a like down below, subscribe to the channel with notifications on to stay up to date on all of my latest content, join the Discord for a community of like-minded woodland creatures, and please keep leaving me comments because they warm my little bonnet heart. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.